Sean Riley, publisher of ITN Magazine at SIM 2015. And with me is Brad Levin, general manager in North America of Visage Imaging. Brad, let's talk trends for just a second. It's no secret that radiology has been under enormous pressure as of late. And despite that fact, it seems that many are recognizing there's opportunity in the emerging landscape. Can you def uh, define for us any trends that you're seeing that might be driving investment in medical imaging? Certainly, there's, uh, there's been a windfall of, uh, of changes going on. Certainly, the change from volume to value uh, is something that uh, we see everywhere we go. The ACR is impressed upon uh, the radiology community, the need to uh, develop imaging 3.0 uh, philosophies and technologies to drive improvement and the ability for radiology to become closer to the customers of radiology, the referring physician. Um, certainly that's combined with some of the challenges that uh, providers have faced over the last decade with technologies that were developed last century that haven't really uh, provided the solutions that providers have been uh, requiring for today's care. These institutions uh, are now trying to provide a single point of access for the providers that they're serving, the patients in their, in their local population, but the technologies that they invested in years ago haven't kept up with the times. Uh, so there's been a, a notion of commoditization in the PACS world, and even though modalities have continued to uh, advance in terms of PET-MR and DBT and have dramatically increased the size of studies that they need to be managed in their institutions, uh, the PAC systems haven't been able to keep up. Uh, in addition, the, the other trends that we see are consolidation and realignment of practices, both on the inpatient and outpatient side. And these institutions need to build a platform that's scalable so as they acquire new facilities, as they reach out in their communities and merge with other practices, they are able to obtain the economies of scale that they envision behind those consolidation efforts. Right. And they need the technology to actually drive the improvements in a number of different ways. Brad, in imaging, the viewers where the radiologist interprets images and where the referring physician views them, and despite the fact that images are the face of radiology, is almost a prevailing attitude that all viewers are created equal. True? The, the viewer, Sean, is, is something that is integral to a day's work for a radiologist and referring physician access to those images. And the viewer itself really hasn't changed all that much since the advent of PACS um, over two decades ago. Uh, but today, the viewer is incredibly important because it's, it's spanning across the enterprise and it needs to do more. It needs to optimize the environment for the physicians that are using those tools. And with the best possible systems, they're able to collapse multitudes of viewers into a single viewing platform. Uh, so it's really the strength of the infrastructure, the architecture of the system, that needs to carry the day. So viewers aren't created e equal. Some are created in browsers, some are restricted to third party party components that need to support those applications, and others like Visage are a simple application that works on multiple platforms like PC and Mac and iOS, all powered from the same infrastructure. Uh, the institutions that leverage the best viewers are able to consolidate across their enterprises, retiring the use of viewers that once had niche applications, but now they can have a single viewing platform for all of the users of imaging, uh, and that includes non-DICOM or non-diagnostic images as well. Um, because certainly when enterprise users are accessing the images through the EMR, uh, they want to have access to everything. Not just radiology and cardiology images has been historically the case in the imaging world. Uh, but through the use of the best possible viewers, they're able to catapult and leap forward uh, the capabilities that the PAX market innovated many, many years ago. Brett, at ACR 2015, industry expert Dr. David Clooney described three goals for anyone designing an IT system for radiologists. Yeah, make it fast, make it fast, make it fast. Do you agree? Absolutely. I've been advocating for years, Sean, that the, the best systems are the ones that actually perform and do the job that the radiologists and referring physicians expect. You need the feature functionality for sure, but a radiologist is not going to wait for those images to come up on their workstation. The referring physicians are not going to tolerate a stuttery image viewer. They want something that works 
incredibly all the time uh, in a consistent fashion, but happens very fast wherever they need it, whether they're working in their facility, they're at the outpatient clinic, or acquiring and, and interpreting images from home. Brad, as institutions prepare to replace their legacy imaging systems, many are taking a fresh approach, deconstructing their traditional packs with best of breed imaging components. You've written a great deal on the subject. Tell us what the strategy is for deconstructed packs. Deconstructed packs is, is something that has been brewing for many years. Uh, because of the commoditization or perceived commoditization of imaging technology and all the stresses on imaging, uh, combined with the challenges in imaging overall, institutions have felt trapped by the systems that they're leveraging. So these systems have put up barriers for them to adopt the latest technologies, the latest modalities, grow through acquisition, etc. So a deconstructed PACS model um, allows an institution to take back control and seize the opportunity that's before them. They're able to break down the components of their PACS environment and adopt the best available technologies for viewing, for workflow, and for archiving their data mm -hmm. in order to provide a scalable platform that grows with their institution for the future. Okay. Seizing that control is central across the domain because when you choose all of those technologies from a single vendor, most often than not, you are checking all the boxes for feature functionality, but you're a master of none of those technologies. Right. So a deconstructed PACS model that allows that institution to integrate very tightly to the best technologies for viewing, for workflow, and for storage of their imaging data provides that platform for overcoming today's challenges and for growth in the future. So Brad, many of the hospital institutions today are starting to recognize that a deconstructed PAC strategy might be right for them, but they're not sure where to start. Uh, for an institution that's made the commitment to a deconstructed PAC strategy, you know, what's the next step for them? Well, I, I think making that first step, committing to that strategy, uh, actually takes some time. I'd recommend that they reach out to the stakeholders of their institution, gather the, the uh, respective parties, align with uh, a strategy and goals and objectives to achieve and overcome the challenges that they have today and where they actually want to go as an institution. Mm -hmm. A deconstructed PACS uh, strategy really uh, begins with the institution committing for the change. They simply need to identify the, the core components of the deconstructed PACS and how they're going to get there. So first and foremost, they need to figure out from a prioritization standpoint where they're going to start. Are they going to start with aggregating their images? Many institutions today have already aggregated their images in a VNA mm -hmm. or at least in a DICOM archive. They also need to determine whether or not they're going to invest in a workflow engine to optimize workflow within their institution and the future institutions that uh, are going to be within the health system, uh, whether they're an inpatient or outpatient group. And many institutions, if they've already adopted an EHR that can sustain uh, EHR-driven workflow, that may be a more cost-effective or a more rapid approach for the institution uh, to go live with the deconstructed mm -hmm. packs. Uh, other institutions may want to leverage their reporting system, which may have uh, workflow capabilities as well, based upon the sophistication of the practice and the, the depth of information that they want to obtain uh, based upon their new integrated deconstructed packs. And then lastly, they need to focus on the best possible viewer to provide interpretation, mm -hmm. to provide referring physician access, and mobile access to those images. So the superset of systems that come together with the deconstructed packs allow that institution uh, to be prepared for today as well as poised for the future. For anyone who wants to learn more about deconstructing packs, I'm sure you might be willing to help. Well, where Absolutely. can they turn? Absolutely, Visage Imaging is, uh, is here to help. We've got tremendous experience as a leader in deconstructed packs, working with institutions that have already made uh, demonstrated steps towards that future state, whether they started with VNA or workflow or the viewing component first and foremost. Visage is certainly here to help. We have information on our website. We're willing to consult with uh, institutions about their strategy. This is something that does not happen overnight. Uh, typically, it's for institutions that are, have the foresight 
to grasp the change, bring that control back to the institution, and also rally around their, their enterprise to make orders of magnitude of improvement uh, as they move forward. Right. Well, thanks, Brad. Thanks for spending the time with us.